Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about John Jones, who is coming off of a win at UFC 285 against Cyril Gaon to become the new UFC heavyweight champion. And like, I'm speechless. I, I truly am speechless. And first of all, look, did I not call it? Did I not say this before? Did I not analyze the body language and say, hmm, John Jones got this one? I'm an expert for a reason and it just showed it just showed how confident John was and how determined he was to win this fight because he went out there on a mission and he even said this before the fight he's like I want to make a statement in this fight my goal is to not only win but to do it as quickly and as easily as possible and he did that he did just that and it was amazing to see I couldn't believe how easy it was for him to not only beat Surreal, but become the UFC heavyweight champion. I feel like this was a long time in the making, and for him to finally get here and perform like that after all the adversity he had to face before this, whether it was the long layoff, the new weight class, the past performances prior to this where it, he looked like he was uninspired, the controversy that he was facing outside of the cage. There was just so much going against him prior to this fight that I understood why people were picking Surreal because after all, yes, Surreal was unable to capture the undisputed championship when he fought Francis Ngannou, but then once he fought Tai Tuivasa, everyone realized, oh man, this guy is one of the best heavyweights in the world without a doubt because yeah, Tai is a solid fighter. I know he's on a losing streak right now, but at the time when he fought Cyril Gunn, he was doing very well. Even that went against Derek Lewis. At the time, Derek Lewis was doing pretty well, and Cyril just showed that there are levels to this. He is just on another level for most of the heavyweights, and a lot of that is because of his size. He's not the usual big heavyweight. He is a muscular heavyweight, a tall heavyweight, and a very athletic one. That's the type of heavyweight we don't usually see in this division. And obviously, this is not obviously, but this is the new type of heavyweight that's coming up. We have ex other examples of this are Tom Aspinall, even Curtis Blades I put in there. He's not your typical big heavyweight, like a Tank Abbott, for example, or even like a Tai Tuivasa um, or a Derek Lewis. Cyril Gaon was the head of that pack. So I understand why people were like, man, you know what? He can do it. He can be the guy who is in the right place at the right time when it comes to taking this fight against John Jones, a guy who's not been fighting too often, not been looking too good as of recent, both inside and outside of the cage. Maybe Cyril Gaon will capitalize on this moment and shock the world, but just unable to do it and let's go through the fight right away first of all size wise there wasn't really much of a difference John Jones fits in this heavyweight division quite well sure maybe he's not as muscular as jacked as Cyril gone but height wise reach wise he was able to compete with him the two were trading on the feet right away and I would give credit to surreal he was looking pretty competitive there i get i get they were just trading shots early on but he was keeping up he was like moving quickly and i was like oh man like there's a good chance that he could catch john but he was unable to john was able to bring the fight down and the moment that happened basically the fight was over because john brought him down locked up a guillotine was unable to get it originally readjusts then goes for the guillotine again, and the tap comes. A little bit over two minutes it was, just so quickly. I was kind of disappointed in a way with how quickly this ended, because after not seeing John Jones fight for so long, he comes back and just fights, wins so quickly. I thought it was at least going to go to a decision, something like that, especially when we consider John's three past wins against 
Dominic Reyes, uh, Tiago Santos, Anthony Smith. I thought, you know what, maybe he's going to bring this to the judges' scorecard and Cyril will show a lot of heart in this defeat. I, that's what I thought personally, but for him to just absolutely dominate Cyril right from the start is just something I did not anticipate and it really shows the level that John Jones is at, a level where many people prior to this fight were considering him as the greatest of all time. And for me, I wasn't one of those people. I wasn't someone who said, you know what, John Jones is the GOAT. I put GSP in that spot and a lot of it was because yes, GSP has that second belt in another division, long reigning champion at welterweight, but most importantly, no controversies when it comes to drug tests, never failed a drug test. And I'm one of those people, the moment a fighter fails a drug test, they're out of the greatest of all time conversation. But I'm not gonna lie, when John brought up that USADA no longer considered the picogram thing as a failed drug test nowadays, I kind of agreed with him when he said, I feel like I'm clear. Like I'm not someone who fails drug tests anymore. There's something, I feel like, yeah, the picogram thing that happened with Cormier was a big deal and it really hurt his legacy, but also didn't he fail for something against OSP when they fought? I'm not entirely too sure, I gotta look at that. But the biggest one was the picogram thing, but since USADA doesn't consider that as a failed drug test anymore, I kind of have to agree that I think John is in the clear when it comes to that. So I said to myself, because of this, if John were to beat Surreal and become the heavyweight champion, I would consider him as the greatest of all time. And now that he's done it, especially with the way that he's done it, I'm going to have to stick to my word and say, John Jones is the greatest MMA fighter of all time over my beloved GSP because Man, the guy has been doing this for years and we have not seen him lose. I would think that at least in this fight with Cyril, it was going to be a difficult time for him. He's older now, all the adversity, this and that, but he made it look easy. And I think a lot of the reason why he made this look easy compared to his three previous wins as the light heavyweight champion is because he was more motivated as the light heavyweight champion in that final stretch as that light heavyweight champion he just didn't really care anymore the opponents that the UFC gave him didn't really excite him and that's why he kind of maybe just did enough to win that's how I saw it at least but I could also understand the argument that oh John Jones is getting older he's no longer in his prime he's not the same fighter anymore but I think this win over Cyril gone kind of erases those talks and kind of supports my view on that John Jones wasn't motivated and now that he moved up to heavyweight and had a new challenge ahead of him to become the heavyweight champion a two a, a champion in two different divisions that challenge excited him and because of it he really stepped up and showed everyone why he is the greatest of all time it was crazy. It was just very amazing to see. Cyril gone, man. I, I can't really say much about him because the guy, I thought he was going to do a little bit more, but I think the moment kind of got to him, especially going up against a fighter like John. I get that he was saying how I'm not intimidated by John. I don't really care that people refer to him as the greatest of all time. But once they got into there, into the cage, it really seemed like he was overwhelmed. And I was just felt bad for the guy I was like damn you know um <laughs> you worked so hard to get to this point get to a title shot and you have one of the biggest fights of your careers biggest fight of your career you have the opportunity to dethrone the goat and you don't show up and it's just like it sucks to see but in the end of the day there's levels to this and how I was saying that Cyril is on another level compared to most heavyweights John is on an even higher level, especially when we consider his ground game. He has a wrestling base that most heavyweights don't have. The only others that I can say 
can be competitive on the ground with him are Curtis Blades and maybe Tom Aspinall. But aside from that, these other heavyweights aren't really ground fighters. They like to keep the fight standing, which is what most heavyweights do. But now that you have a champion who is a high level wrestler, that may not be that may not be the the what's the word that may not be the tactic, the game plan in order to defeat John Jones. So heavyweight division just became very exciting now that John captured the belt. And obviously people are talking about a matchup with him and the former champion Stipe Miocic. I'm not going to lie. I'm not really excited for that matchup. I don't care for it. I get that Stipe has a lot of name value because many consider him as the greatest heavyweight of all time, defended that belt three times, lost it, recaptured it, two-time UFC heavyweight champion. But in the end of the day, he's coming off of a loss, and it wasn't just a loss, it was a brutal knockout defeat to Francis Ngannou, and ever since then, he hasn't fought. I swear it's been like a little bit more than two years since that defeat, and Stipe is now in his 40s. He's doing his other job as a fireman now. And in my opinion, yes, he is one of the greatest fighters of all time. Probably the greatest heavyweight of all time, in my opinion. But at this point in his career, I just don't think he has it anymore. So for him to fight John at this point, I don't see the point of it. I think Stipe is past his prime and I guess I get that he has the tools to make it a competitive fight. He has that striking. He has the wrestling. But John Jones, man, I feel like he's still in his prime. He's 35 years old, 36 years old. I don't think he's going to be stopped by Stipe. Stipe won't be able to defeat him. So that's why I'm not really excited about that matchup. To be honest, I'm more excited about a matchup between John and Sergei Pavlovich, even though I'm talking about a striker cannot fight someone like John Jones and beat him. I feel like Sergey is different, man. Sergey is just someone who is so dangerous when it comes to striking. I feel like he is the closest to a Francis Ngannou. And if you want to see a Francis Ngannou versus John Jones in the UFC, the closest you're going to get is John Jones versus Sergei Pavlovich and it's a shame that Francis is out of the UFC because I would have loved to see him fight John but for me I'm one of those people who consider John as the heavyweight champion right now I don't see Francis as that anymore even though he tweeted um good job John from the heavyweight king I don't agree with Francis on that anymore I I credit him for leaving at the top but in the end of the day john jones is there now i can't say that francis is in a position where people i don't know like i i can't really say that francis is that guy anymore if that makes any sense i think john is that guy now he doesn't even have to prove that against francis anymore in order for me to be like oh he's the real heavyweight champion that's john jones and now that he is the heavyweight champion, I consider him as the greatest MMA fighter of all time. But what do you think? Who's next for John Jones? Were you impressed with his performance? How long do you think he'll remain as the heavyweight champion? But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.